Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is LJ and this is A Journey East. Just an FYI, I do have everything timestamped in the description box. So if you just wanna jump right into the different platforms and thumbnail creation tools that I have, just open up the description box and you can hop right to it. But I just wanna do a quick little intro and let you guys know that thumbnails are super important. I'm sure you know that, that's why you're here. One thing that I always recommend to people is to really think about them while you're creating the content and not so much as an afterthought. We tend to think of it as like something to do just last minute, throw it together, just to get your video up there but they're so, so important to getting people to actually click on your videos. I know that there are a lot of tutorials out there for PicMonkey, that's what most YouTubers use, and they're awesome. I've actually done one before, back when I had two separate channels. I did one on my old vlog channel, but this is really comprehensive. I wanted to make sure that if I was gonna create a new video that it was actually really, really beneficial and showed something more than just PicMonkey because that's what everybody uses. So I'm actually covering PicMonkey Canva and TubeBuddy, a new tool that I recently discovered to create thumbnails. So I hope that this is really helpful for you and um, make sure to leave me a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed it. I'm gonna be doing a ton more videos like this as long as you guys like them. So make sure to thumbs up if you do so I know to keep making them. And yeah, hope you enjoy the video. The first thing that we're gonna wanna do is go to pickmonkey.com. So I took a really bad picture that First, I need to brighten up. So essentially, this is going to be the background picture. So what I'm gonna do is brighten it up, like a lot. Um, yeah, this is like the default menu that you get when you open up PicMonkey. So you can brighten by clicking on exposure and then you can also adjust the contrast. These are all pretty like plug and play, pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on them. Um, you just kinda have to learn them by playing around with it. So 19 by 1080 is the correct size. That's the size that you want for a thumbnail. So I'm gonna save this and then I'm going to add a layer on top of it. So I like to save it just like in case I lose it. Okay, so this is one way to make a background transparent. You'll go down to this magic wand, then you'll scroll down to find draw at the bottom with these pencils. And then you're gonna choose a color that does not appear anywhere on your skin, on your face, on your jewelry, anything like that. And you're gonna color in the background with that color. You can do big spots to begin with and then like get in at the details. Okay, like that was too big because it, it's gonna cut into my shoulder. This is seriously a secret that I have not showed anybody to date, not even my boyfriend, so you guys are getting some good stuff from me. Okay, so you do that, and then we're going to use the little draw tool. Okay, and if, if you, in case you haven't noticed, I can go back, like see, like if I just do that, that's too much, you could just click back right here. Sorry if it's loud, there's like cars over. And then you'll just use a smaller brush tool to get in at the details. Like I said, this is not perfect, so there's gonna be some, like that's, no there's gonna be still you know some spots this is not like rocket science or anything like that I don't think it's that serious you know you have to think about on YouTube you're seeing like such a small little um, the thumbnail is so small typically so it's not like the hugest deal okay so that's kind of like as best as I'm probably gonna get it for now so I just apply and then save this I always save it at the highest resolution. Save to my computer. Um, I'm just gonna title this red because I'm not original. Now, as you can see, I actually have two separate windows open for PicMonkey. The unfortunate thing about PicMonkey is that you can't really save as a draft, so you have to like start, um, you have to start new like projects. So just make sure to like save. I always save each thing, you know what I mean? So this is a fun little tool that I found. I'm just going to upload that image and then you click on the area that you, or the color that you'd like to be made transparent. And there we go. Now there's some things that we can do to cl clean up these harsh edges if I wanted to. Um, I likely would probably go back and fix it up, but just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to save it now so I don't like bore you guys too much. And we can actually make it up a little bit, like you can see where there's really harsh red lines in a couple areas. So I'm actually gonna bump bump it up a little bit and see if it takes care of that. Let's see. You can bump it up a little and then click apply and it might get rid of a little bit more. But if not, like I said, there's a couple of little tricks up my sleeve to sort of 
blur them out a little, but for now, this is just gonna be good for the sake of this tutorial. I've already been <laughs> recording a long time. Next thing I'm gonna do, I can close this out now since I decided I'm not going to make it any more advanced, even though I probably really would if this was something I'm really gonna put up. Um, okay, so we're back into this background. This is what I'm gonna use for the background. Let me make sure I'm all the way bumped up. I'm gonna click on this butterfly and then I can overlay that transparent image, like so. Okay, picking up what I'm putting down. Okay, so this is just kind of, okay, cool. So now we have, like I said, we have these harsh kind of lines. So I'm gonna go back to this little magic wand and I'm just gonna use the draw tool To, and I'm going to use white. I move the hardness all the way down because I just want like a glow. And then I'm going to make this a big thing so I can put it behind I'm making it white. Okay, and then you just click apply. So I'm going to just do like draft one. And then I'm going to open that. I know this is like a little bit confusing, but this is just the way that it is. And then I'm going to take draw tool, I'm going to move the brush size down and I'm gonna move the hardness down quite a bit. And then I'm just gonna take this little brush and I'm gonna start cleaning up. So like that actually looks a little too harsh, so I'm gonna go back and make it, I'm probably just gonna make it all the way down and a little brush. So again, I've said this so many times, but this is not gonna be perfect, but I, Okay, that's really not perfect, but we're just gonna like do our best. I just find that the glow, like this little, you know, moving it down, this um, hardness down, is a little bit more forgiving. It kind of is supposed to look sort of messy and, you know, not super harsh, so it makes it like a little bit okay to sort of draw over the lines. I've said this a thousand times, but I know it's not perfect. Um, again, if you want to clean it up a little bit more, you can still take this and do like a bigger brush and kind of make like a bit of a gradient. Um, I do that sometimes, just to kind of like make it a little bit less harsh. Just do like one here and there. The bigger the tool you use, the softer the line. Just keep that in mind. So like this is actually appearing a little too harsh for me, so I'm actually gonna probably cancel and try that again with a bigger brush size because I want it to look really soft. But just kind of help it blend a little bit. Long story short, my whole computer just shut down. <laughs> so I actually, I'm really glad that I saved that file. Um, yeah, it's just a word to the wise. Sometimes this crashes my like shock time or whatever. I know nothing about computers, but anyway. So yeah, luckily I saved that. So anyway, I recommend using like, I don't know, two to three fonts as like your signature fonts just to keep a cohesive look to your channel. So one of the ones that I use is Tall, Dark, and Handsome. It's actually one of the like standard fonts that come in um, PicMonkey. You can also upload your own, but that's what crashed my computer. So I'm not gonna show you that, but if you just click on yours, like you can upload your own from going to a website like Defont or whatever, which I will show you later when I do the TubeBuddy tutorial. So yeah, this you can see is a kind of harsh line. So I'm gonna try to put some text over top of it and then put a background so it kind of like distracts you. Really that's a lot of what thumbnails are all about is just casually camouflaging things. I just arrange these sort of all over the place wherever I want. You can see, I'll do like a screenshot of my channel. My, my thumbnails tend to have a pretty cohesive look. Like even if they're about different things or whatever, they tend to kind of look similar. So that's what I want my words to be. Now I'm gonna go over to this butterfly again and do a rectangle, geometric. And then I'm going to make this white or should I do it backwards? I think I'm just going to make it white and see how it looks. Make it white and then, oh, that's gray. I'm going to fade it to like 15% usually is what I do. 
And I'm going to right click and click duplicate four times so I don't have to like, oh shoot, <laughs> duplicate four times or three times, whatever. So I don't have to do that transparency all four times. These are just like time saving hacks, I guess. And then I'm going to right click and click um, send to back. And then I'm just going to drag this out like so and then use this little part to rotate and for all of the simple commands for pick monkey i do have a tutorial on my old channel i'm gonna have that link down below i know this is kind of like a little bit advanced but i didn't want to waste time because i know a lot of people sort of have already figured out the basic pick monkey functions and functionality so I just wanted to, you know, kind of hop in. So. so yeah, for the sake of this video, this is going to be good. Like I said, I would probably clean up the edges. Like they look a little bit harsh for me, but it does definitely take time. So this is not like a get rich quick scheme or anything like that. One other thing that I sometimes do is I'll add like a highlight color behind the text just to make it pop a little bit. So you just go to this draw tool again. Let's see, what's a color that would be, that would work well? Maybe like a pink, a nice millennial pink blush color. And I just do like a really big tool and I just do a dot. It's definitely like a technique that you gotta get down. So like, just like that, you know? I don't know. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And then you just apply everything and then you save. And I'll give you an example of what it looks like when it's uploaded. The other thing that you can do is if your harsh lines are still like really apparent is you can do something like this. This is the focal soften. So let's see, I'll just blur and then you reverse it so that the spot here is like being softened. And you can do that a few times and it'll sort of make it look a little bit better. <laughs> My gosh, I am so obsessive. I just saw another spot that I really want to get. And I always keep this window open until I have it uploaded and I'm happy with it because if not, sometimes it will, well, it, it definitely will not save. So if there is anything that I was like, oh shoot, I really wish I made that adjustment, now's the time. So I'm just gonna upload something just for fake and cancel it because this isn't actually edited. Just pretend to upload this. Mm -mm -mm. Come on, give me the option. Okay, then you'll click on custom thumbnail. So that is what it will look like in most places on YouTube. You know, it looks like you don't really see a ton of the harsh lines. It's not, I don't know, it's fine. So for, for the purpose of what this is, I think it's fine. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna do this one very quickly because I actually covered it in that previous video that I talked about, but I'm gonna show you how I do a little collage. I get a lot of questions about this, so I wanted to make sure I covered this briefly. Go to collage, obviously, like it says, and then you're gonna uncheck this little lock, do 1920 by 1080, full res, and then I always go to this artist palette, undo the spacing, I don't like any spacing, and then you'll just add two images, um, what do I have? Okay, these are both really bad pictures because I was gonna make them transparent, so ignore the ugliness, or not ugliness, but you know, the weirdness of these pictures. You can make these bigger or smaller if I wanted to do like a close-up. So let's just pretend that I wanted to do two close-ups behind this ugly <laughs> brown background. You just zoom them in like that. I mean, that actually looks pretty cool despite the fact that it's like this horrible ugly door behind me and then you just do that you can slide this over you know make it bigger you can add cells so i can add um if i wanted to do this picture again do that but yeah so let's just pretend that's what i wanted then i'm going to click export to editor and that's this is just telling you that like the arrangement that you have is totally like that's it so then you just click you can't change it anymore so click export and then you'll just get taken to this Pick monkey editor where I can do the same stuff that I did before, you know, do my text, 
Um, this line, some people like it to be really seamless. So again, you can kind of use those same tricks that I taught you earlier, where you do um, an effect, like a blurring effect. You can just kind of blur it somewhat. It's not perfect. I know I'm going to keep saying that, but you know, this isn't Photoshop, okay? It's a free tool online. I think all these features that I've showed you so far are free. If any of them aren't, it costs like five dollars a month to pay for the subscription. I do pay for it. I think it's worth it. That's kind of, you know, you get the gist and then you just do a line of it and then I would probably place my text like in the middle so that it sort of covers that up and that's how you do the side-by-side -side images. We're gonna go to Canva. Canva is really simple and user-friendly so it's not gonna keep you here too much longer. Go to create a design. This is free. I don't pay for Canva. Um, and then you can scroll down to social media and email, and then there's an option right there for YouTube thumbnail. So as you can suspect, this is very, you know, as I said, user-friendly. I mean, it's literally, there's all these, you know, little thumbnail things that show you what they'll look like. If they have a dollar sign, that means that there's assets in them that cost money. Usually you can change them though, and it'll show you. So the, the thing with the X's is the woman. It's the background photo, so you can delete that and upload your own. And I have, you know, these are just things that I've uploaded before. So I could just quickly add that. Go back to layouts. Um, you know, this is a good one. Again, let's see. Replace. Again, it's the image that costs money. So we can go, um, you know, this would be great for, you know, a vlog. San Francisco, whatever. You know, you, you, you get it. You just change all that stuff. You can click on this and change the color, all that. Go back to layouts. Let's just, I'm just trying to show you a few examples. Place. So yeah, this one is totally free. So if you wanted to do a vlog where you were in the forest, <laughs> you could just honestly take, take this exact image and upload it. I mean, I wouldn't recommend doing that. I'd always recommend obviously customizing it. But these are nice for if you're in a pinch. I really like these, especially if you're a business watching. I mean, like, this looks so cool to me for, you know, how to create thumbnails. I mean, that's, like, too big. But, you know, you get with, like, if I was just a business, you know, boom, there you go. Especially if you're in a series. I really recommend these for, like, a series. So I actually do my Freelance Friday series using a kind of canned Canva thumbnail because it's just really easy to keep them uniform. So yeah, there you go. You guys get it, right? It's super, super easy. I highly recommend spending some time and playing around. I mean, Canva took a little bit for me to figure out fully. I don't know why, because it's so easy. It almost is like too easy. But once you figure it out, you guys are gonna love it. I made my business cards in here and everything. But anyway, we're just talking about thumbnails, so let's move on. All right, next thing I'm gonna show you is the TubeBuddy app. This is, um, you're gonna hear me talk about this a lot in the future. There are a lot of cool features to this uh, browser extension. I'm gonna have a link down below. Oh my gosh, my computer is being so slow, you guys. So there's a lot of cool functionality to this, but um, one of the coolest is this feature. It's the, let me choose a vlog. Um, it is the thumbnail generator. So you, once you have installed, you do have to pay, I believe you have to pay for this feature. There are a lot of features to TubeBuddy that are free, but I believe that the thumbnail generator is one of the paid ones. Um, if I am mistaken, I will put it on the screen or leave it down below. Anyway, once you have the paid TubeBuddy, this menu will pop up and you'll click on thumbnail generator. You choose what you would like to use. So for this instance, I'm just going to pick a thumb or a still frame from the video. And then let's just say that this is what I wanted. You know, I really recommend using this only for vlogs or like more casual videos or if you're just not super, super serious about YouTube because, you know, it is a little bit, you know, it's a little bit not that great, but it's better than nothing. So you can adjust the frame. So you can see that's a little blurry. So I just moved it forward just a tad and it looks a lot more clear. Then click continue. And then you can do whatever you want here. So like I said, I'm gonna show you text really quick. Um, go to defont.com. I'm gonna download my favorite, favorite font. I'm gonna put um, day in the life 
I guess. Why isn't it showing up? Okay, add. So, you know, there's these generic kind of ugly fonts that they have here. I mean, I don't really think any of these are that great. I mean, that one's not too bad. This one, I guess, is okay. I don't know. They're not the greatest, you know? So I'm going to actually, the cool thing is you can upload your own font. So I'm going to go to Defont really quick, and I'm going to download, what is my, ooh, that one's so cute. Oh, I love this one. What is it called? What is it called? Impact Label. This is one of my favorite fonts. So it kind of already has a background to it which is nice, so you don't need to worry about the layers. I'm gonna actually just save this to my documents because I need that. So to export a font in Mac, at least, you just double click on the zip file and then you have the TTF files. Let's see, did it show up yet? Okay, yes. Delete this then, delete that layer. Let's try again. Day in the life. So then your own font shows up. Okay, that, okay, I was gonna say that did not work, but it did work, okay. And then I want it to be the black one. You can change all the colors. Click choose, sorry about the freaking motorcycle army that's going past. And then you can move this around. So like I said, this is not perfect, but it is a really nice little solution for if you're in a pinch, if you're a vlogger. I mean, during Vlogmas, I'm probably gonna be using this tool a lot. I'll probably just, you know, have a little rhythm to it. You can add shapes. Um, let's just pretend a circle would make sense there. You can also adjust the opacity of it. So I want this just to be, you know, like that. Um, I'm gonna make this a little less black. You can also upload an image. So I don't know, I think I was just testing this. That was weird. But there's this picture of my face. I mean, you can rearrange this. Obviously this is clearly like just really quick but you can kind of do a little collage there it's really pretty cool so then you just click that this will show you an example of what it will look like in a feed um and like i said i mean i just threw a couple of random things together but it's actually not too bad for creating it sort of on the fly this also gives you a view preview for facebook which you know this shows you because that's all that facebook gives you unfortunately and then for twitter i don't know why twitter is distorted like that but you can also save layers as a template. Um, you can lock the background or unlock it. So if I wanted to have kind of like a black, you know, background, you can move that or you can just lock it. So now the background won't move. So yeah, there's a lot that you can do with it. And if you'd like to cancel because this looks, you know, not that great to me. <laughs> you could also choose um, the background. I don't think I showed you this, but you can choose a solid color or you can choose an image. So they have some canned ones that you can use, which is pretty nice. So once again, like if this is just for your job, like a company or something like that, I mean, maybe some of these would work. Um, this one, a lot of people like to use. You can up also upload your own, I believe. I don't, yeah, you can upload your own. So this is font, so that won't work. But yeah, you get the gist. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it so, so much. Again, don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up the video if you thought it was helpful. Leave me a comment down below and I look forward to seeing your new thumbnails. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.